very beautiful morning to you. It's half past 11 on Women Radio 91.7. Today being the 17th day in the month of March and this is Her Voice. Her Voice is the program that condemns all forms of violence and discrimination against women and girls. Her Voice is that initiative of Women Radio 917 in partnership with Action Aid Nigeria and supported by Global Affairs Canada. My name is Victoria Waifu and today we'll be discussing gender equality a possibility or a mirage in Nigeria and we meet today in the studio of course I don't do this alone I have two amazing women with me in the studio today and um, let me start off with Zira Talib yeah so I have Zira in the <laughs> studio today she's a program manager of she tank yes good morning Zira good morning good morning thank you for joining us today and I also have Feikemi Idowu Fabi she is the Continental Secretary Advisory Board of AYF. She's here in the studio with me today. Good morning, Faith Kim. Morning. Thank Good you for joining us. You're welcome. And of course, you look beautiful. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So let's let's go to the subject matter. It's um, gender equality, a possibility or a mirage. And then you know this is Women's Month. Uh, some days ago, we celebrated the International Women's Day and. It was all over the place. Oh, I am generation equality, realizing women's rights, da da da. So we want to look at gender equality. If it's a possibility, or we are just simply, you know, singing our trumpet out there. You know, research has said that um, women have been subjected to marginalization, some kind of discrimination, deprivation of equal resources. You know, and um, some women also don't have equal opportunities like the men counterpart do and it's kind of worrisome because um, you know um, gender it's, it's supposed to be there's supposed to be some form of balance whether you are a woman or a man it shouldn't really matter you should be looking at the capability of that individual but you know Nigeria as a state is, is really amazing that we get to sign every law on gender equality everything that has to do with you know, moving the nation or the, the world at large forward, we are a party to that signature. And we don't, we just sign on paper, we don't effect it. So it brings me to the question today, is gender equality truly a possibility or a mirror? Let me start with you. Yes, it's a possibility, but then the question comes to, okay, in what time frame? So are we saying, is gender equality a possibility in the next 10 years? Then the answer is no. But if we're saying maybe in the next 100 years, then of course the answer would be yes. Um, so according to um, several different um, organizations, they say on a global scale we can reach gender equality in, 100, in 108 years. Mm -hmm. So then this is on a global scale, but Nigeria ranks 128th out of 153 countries. So when we think about Nigeria and the world is already at 108 years, we we'll have to add maybe another 50 years to that to that um, time frame. So saying maybe Nigeria will be 158 years before we reach gender equality. So thank you. I want to hear your opinion. Do you think gender equality is a possibility? Uh, I we agree with what my partner said, but on other opinion, we can actually achieve this thing even within. Although it's going to be a long term uh, frame, but it is not what can actually go a very long way like that. Mm -hmm. Take it, for example, I just want to chip in this. Take, for example, what Not Too Young To Run did mm -hmm. in 2017 and 2018. Mm -hmm. They actually came together under one umbrella and they made their voice known to all African countries, not mm -hmm. even only in Nigeria. Yeah. So if women can come together mm -hmm. as one voice, we have one voice, unity, under one umbrella, under a single network, mm -hmm. this thing will help us to really achieve this thing within a very short time period. Okay. Take okay for what they did that time. Mm -hmm. They organized press conferences. Yeah. And they spread their network across the whole states, including the FCC. Mm -hmm. So if women can actually come together like this in one body mm -hmm. to speak in one voice, to speak in multilateralism, it's really achieve us to achieve this thing within a very short time frame. I posted something on social media that was during the, the on the, when we were celebrating International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. So I was, okay, each for equal, everybody was celebrating. And oh. you wouldn't believe I saw some messages in my inbox and some men actually sending me messages that equality, 
like a big question mark. Do you are you contented with men? Do you want to make yourself the Man. same with men? Uh, you understand? So. <laughs> Well, okay, we are not really getting this thing. We need to change our mindset. Equality mm -hmm. is is the outcome, the outcome of achieving sameness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is is quite different from equity. Mm -hmm. But you know, equally, men believe we are we want to be making rubbing shoulder with them. Yeah. You understand? But this thing is for a woman to be able to stand up without even requesting for her rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, okay, this thing, it's, it's a woman right, it's her right, so just give it to her without her requesting for it. Mm -hmm. You know, even in a, look, look at our a gross uh, domestic uh, mm -hmm. product now. If women could be on, the, on this table, if women could really participate massively, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is going to rise from 23, it's going to be like 23%. Right. Yes, above. So that is like two hundred and twenty-nine billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So and this thing we really help us, but they they, they 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 don't really want women to be out there rubbing shoulder with them, even in the sectors. So what, sectors. what you're saying is give a woman an equal opportunity. Yes, the same equal opportunities. If we can have the content as a man okay. is having it, okay. even in the in the entrepreneurship sector, in every sectors in Nigeria, it really help us. Okay. So I would like to ask Zira now, what are the barriers? Barriers to gender inequality. Gender inequality or yeah. equality? Inequality. inequality. Because it's inequality that you know is causing this problem. There is no balance between you know um, women and mm -hmm. men. So you feel like okay, because she's a woman, I cannot. Uh, she's a weaker sex. She cannot mm -hmm. do what the man mm -hmm. is doing. She doesn't have that you know physical appearance, the skill, and everything mm -hmm. needed. So what are the barriers to achieving equality? Um, I would definitely have to say culture, culture for one. So it's cultural? Uh, yes, it's, it's very cultural. And I think within our culture, we can always say that, oh, you know, my religion says this, my religion says that women are not supposed to do this, women are not supposed to do that. Um, for instance, taking the GEO bill, which mm -hmm. is still trying to be, you know, enacted in Nigeria, a lot of the senators, either Muslim or Christian, were against it simple, sim simply for the fact of religion, saying mm -hmm. that, oh, according to the Bible, it says that women should be, you know, submissive. submissive or but submissive doesn't mean you should exactly. be on the man. Exactly. So it, I think it goes back to the first question of what is the definition of gender equality? Yeah. So like Fahey Kemi said, it's not trying to be better than men. It's not trying to compete with men. It's just having access to the rights and opportunities regardless of your gender. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what it comes down to. But I would definitely say religion and culture are definitely barriers. Okay. I went to do my research and I saw amazing figures online. And, you know, it struck me that there was this, you know, like some people say, it touched me. <laughs> <laughs> there was this thing that, you know, it, it got to me. And I saw um, online that women actually constitute 50% of Nigerians' population. Mm -hmm. And the 2012 gender reports, that you know, some people did stated that 80.2 million girls and women mm -hmm. are suffering as a result of gender inequality mm -hmm. in economy, in education, mm -hmm. in politics, yeah. in health, mm -hmm. even access to justice, and mm -hmm. even equal opportunities that we're talking about. So women are basically suffering in every area. Even in finance. What is the role of government in bridging these gaps so that we don't have all of this problem? Um, I would definitely say just enacting the different bills that are currently sitting in legislation to be passed. Um, but let me just go back a step. And um, so we have the um, national, um, the Nigerian policy that we have to in include about 35% of A women. In, action. Yeah, exactly. And so right now we have about 3.4% of women in parliament. Only 3.4% out of you know, the whole of Nigeria. So I think once we start to include women as decision makers, so giving them a seat at the quote unquote table, um, we have to start there. And then in, in addition to that, actually enacting these laws, regardless of what we feel, you know, um, the way that we feel like our religion or our culture may be threatened, um, mm -hmm. we have to enact these laws. We have laws. It's not like we, we don't have, have several. Laws. Yeah. We have several laws. But these laws are not being translated into reality. Actually, so it goes yeah. back to point zero. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Fake me, what's what's what is your opinion concerning, you know, um, the gaps, inequality gaps okay. that we have in Nigeria and the role governments and other private stakeholders have to play? If all our uh, uh, women are the political sectors that have the strong voice in Nigeria can come together and carry along those women in both public and private sectors, yeah. 
women in the rural sectors and everybody coming together to speak in one voice. We need to create a kind of a platform, like a movement okay. for everybody to be together under one umbrella to fight for this cause, to effect this change. Look okay. at what happened about 40 years ago when uh, our mama, Razam Kuti, Fumilayo Razam Kuti, she was the one that actually fought for women right that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And that is the benefit we are still enjoying up till now. No. So if only one person can stand up on our feet to fight for women right mm -hmm. and to enable that we are inclusive in governance and politics. So I believe if all these are women out there that they are on the top position, if they could come together and bring everybody on board under just a single umbrella in one accord in one unity and we begin to fight for this cause it's like it's going to be like a movement so we are just it's just as if we are we've we been moving in one train uh -huh. to speak together uh -huh. and fight for this thing together organize different press conferences do a lot of actions of like movements uh campaign work and uh, press conference uh, media so this thing is going to really Use help us media. yes yeah. to achieve this uh, gender equality. So that leads me to the, my next question. There's this, um, you know, thing that you know people do unconsciously. You leave out the youths. You leave out the young women in this case because we're actually talking about women and girls. And um, there's no form of mentorship, um, you know, train. Even though there is mentor to some extent, some people might ha may have mentors. It doesn't mean that you sh your mentor should be like um, a 60 year old. You yeah. know, you could have your age mate as of course, your mentor. Mentor, yeah. But mentorship is not really a thing in our society. I don't know why. Why? Why is it so? Is it that people are not open to learning? Is it that people are not open to sharing ideas? Is it that um, we are not building this generation of girls or building a generation of equality like we're singing now? Um, according to Equal Measures. 75% of women between the ages of 15 to 24 are not in school, are not employed, mm -hmm. and are not being trained. 75%, that, that's, that's way too high. high. <laughs> and so we have to include these women into, the, like what Faye Kimmy was saying about all the campaigns, all the um, movements, we have to include them. But at the same time, we have to include males. Men, mm -hmm. yes. we, cannot, we cannot try to have move this conversation yes. without, without, without men. It's, it's everyone's issue. It's not yeah. just women, a women's issue. Yeah. And I think that's also a common misconception where it's, oh, that's the women's issue. Let them gather, let them you know, meet together and figure out a way to handle it themselves. No, we have to be inclusive, mm -hmm. young and old. Lagos State, they have uh, one initiative now, E for She. Yeah. Okay. So they are being carried all the men along mm -hmm. now. So if this thing can be done in all states and everybody coming together, like our men are supporting us. Okay, let me, uh, okay I remember something happened. I, I was in one office, that was last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were just discussing about uh, traditional rulers, who, who is the mm -hmm. first, who is the mm -hmm. leader. So I was about to just say something concerning, and a man said, hey, we are men are talking. You can't talk. You can't talk. We might keep quiet. <laughs> wow. So you know, when he said, I was, I was, I, I felt so cold, and a man, just like him said, do you know that there are some things that you men, we know, and even women, they know more than what we know. So just allow her to speak. So that actually gave me the power to, you know, yeah. to talk. So yeah. if we can, all these men that have, that they have already changed their orientation, mm -hmm. that they have this thing up, upstairs, so that they know what they're doing, breaking you understand? Changing, mindset, so, yeah, yeah. changing their mindsets will really help us. Yeah. It seems like we have a lot of work to do because we actually have to engage the gatekeepers yeah. and now yeah. going to the traditional rulers. Because yeah. it, it, it's like they are just in one you know, sector of the you know, society. We don't feel their, you know, their functionality. We don't feel like there's a presence of a ballet or an OB exactly. here. Because it's when you carry some issues that have to do with women, they still come back to tell you what you just said. A woman should not talk where a man is talking. And so it's, it's, it's a kind of problem. I, I think we should start to be on the same mind. What is the role of, you know, agencies, advocacy groups, NGOs that, you know, take this advocacy forward? It's not just talking. Here. Yeah. You know, we have we actually have to do the, the you know walk the talk. Yeah. So we have to. What is the role of CSOs? I'm interested in advocacy group. I'm interested in some group of young people that will go out there. You are not actually fighting. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to pass a message. Yeah. Yeah. So what is their role? Is there any role women as women we have to take? Because we cannot sit down and allow the men do it for us. Mm -hmm. They would not be able to explain. The way the a woman is feeling. Yeah. So, what is the role as women? What is our role as women to, you know, make sure that 
we get this message out there and our voices are being heard. You know, I've spoken to some women and just like, oh, I don't want to be a man. Or I don't want to do a man's work. Mm. But then when I say, oh, do you want to make your own money? Do you want to have extra money? They're like, then that's, they start to listen. And that's also gender equality, being empowered to have businesses and to be able to take out loans, mm -hmm. things like that. So when we start to define gender equality and raise awareness around the definition of equality, then I think everyone can actually play a yes, part and have yeah. a say. Yeah. All right. Looking at the same statistics, Nigeria has one of the lowest rates of female entrepreneurship in Sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria, same Nigeria has higher numbers of women in casual, low-skilled low and low-paid um, um, from informal sector of employment. Same Nigeria has 4% of female that has completed secondary school in the northern zone. The same Nigeria has two-thirds of 15 to 19 year old girls in northern Nigeria who are illiterate, that is, they can't even read mm -hmm. or write. So, how can we demand accountability? Because education is truly important. Bacon. Okay. We need to go to school, to schools, and even the slums mm -hmm. to reorientate these girls. Because uh, the, even the, there is this a saying that says we catch them young. young. Okay. We can be training them on leadership and even boost their self-esteem. Okay. So, and that one will really, because by the time they are growing up, they will begin to have this mindset of what their rights is really all about, mm -hmm. what they can actually fight for. They will be able to stand on their feet and contend, mm -hmm. even among their classmates, in their workplace and different places. You mentioned something very important, which is also including the, those in the rural in the areas. Rural areas yeah. We tend to forget them when we're discussing anything empowerment yeah, or when empowerment. we're discussing just women's gender equality in general. Yeah. It has to be rural, urban, anywhere. So, so there has to be a synergy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, everyone is actually entitled to equality, that is equality of rights and freedom without distinction of bias or based on gender. The world is changing and we should actually accommodate the value of gender equality, that is giving equal opportunities for everyone. Every woman has a voice and that voice must be heard. Her voice is an initiative of Women Radio 917 under the Women's Voice and Leadership Project in partnership with Action in Nigeria and supported by Global Affairs Canada.